We are at our most alive when we directly experience the exuberance of being at home on this earth. Yet, we have also allowed unbridled growth and consumerism to define our economic and social well-being. Clearly, nature has suffered from our choices. Why do we choose to live in ways that damage the very things we should most cherish, the land and water that sustain us? Despite 40 years of laws designed to protect nature, we are destroying the planet at an alarming rate. To understand the reasons behind this, we have to look more closely at Western culture. Historically, humans have viewed nature as vast and unlimited. We've also seen ourselves at the top of the great chain of being as conquerors of nature. Instead of recognizing that our human survival and health depend on the survival and health of the whole Earth, we dominate and exploit it. Under our current system of environmental regulation, we are losing species at an alarming rate. Harvard biologist E. O. Wilson has estimated the current rate of extinction at three species per hour, 70 per day. 27,000 per year. This is thousands of times greater than historic rates of extinction. This accelerated extinction rate is irrevocably damaging the web of life on Earth, a web that all living things depend upon. And extinctions are not the only sign that our egocentric actions are harming the Earth. Here in Florida, Humans have historically regarded our diverse, water-soaked peninsula as a place to be sopped up, drained, and domesticated. Until the 2008 recession, Florida was losing its natural landscape to development at the rate of 20 acres an hour, 273 square miles a year. As a result, fresh, clean water is becoming increasingly scarce. Some lakes are drying, while many of Florida's springs are losing magnitude and even ceasing to flow. This calamity has placed Florida's ecological, cultural, and economic health in jeopardy. Because our current laws, and particularly our environmental laws, are really based on a sense of property law, and it's a sense of ownership. Our laws do not make any distinction between the contours of the land. Uh, whether there are rivers that flow through it, what, what species live on it. We kind of think that is just a widget that we can, it, it's expendable and we can just sell it and, to somebody else and they can do whatever they want with it. I was, I was deeply formed and moved by the teachings and person of Thomas Berry at this time of my life. And Thomas Berry was a Catholic priest and he termed himself a geologian. Um, he preferred that to a theologian because he said, I'm really learning from Earth. And while all kinds of other people have done similar works to his before him, such as Aldo Leopold or, or, or the work of Rachel Carson with Silent Spring and um, many other people that only later did I start studying who are really very concerned about protection of the natural world and our relationship with it. For me, the doorway into all of this was Thomas Berry's writings and thinkings. Thomas Berry has written, the earth with its layers of land and water and air provides the space within which all living things are nurtured and the context within which humans attain their identity. To acknowledge this more realistic approach to the unique importance of ecosystems, our laws need to undergo sweeping changes of their own. Well, jurisprudence is the philosophy of law. It goes beyond what the law merely requires and instead looks at the theory that underpins the law. The U.S. Constitution and Western laws typically rely on a predominance of the human and a dominant position of the human over nature. As uh, societies and cultures evolve, um, the laws have evolved with them to recognize that certain um, preconceived notions that had applied in earlier times 
are no longer proper. Um, that was the case both with regard to slavery and with regard to women's rights. Traditional laws are designed to put human wants first. They aren't equipped to recognize the rights of nature to exist, thrive, and evolve. Our laws fail to acknowledge that what is good for Earth is also good for humans. By considering only short-term economic desires, our laws jeopardize long-term human health by undermining the sustainability of the Earth itself. The good news is that this system is beginning to change. In Ecuador, their constitution was amended in 2008 to include the rights of nature to exist and to regenerate itself. People there can now petition the court on behalf of a natural system if it's endangered. More recently, New Zealand officials declared legal standing for a river, which is now represented by legal guardians. In the U.S., over two dozen local communities like Nottingham, New Hampshire and Shapley, Maine, now recognize ecosystems as having legal standing with the rights to exist, to regenerate their life cycles, and to be healthy. In a broader way, some 125 U.S. communities are using a rights of nature model to protect the health and life of their communities. Using this concept of a legal system that acknowledges the rights of nature to survive, the Center for Earth Jurisprudence has worked to design curriculum for the Barry University School of Law in Orlando that created a certificate program in environmental and earth law. A vital and growing part of CEJ's work includes advocacy, educational programs, and events and classes for law students, lawyers, and the public. I think that many people are appreciating now how critical it is to protect our environment and that if we don't get it right this time, there may be no going back. This is the mission of the Center for Earth Jurisprudence, to support laws that legally protect the sustainability of life and health on Earth. In Florida, where we are based, we pay particular attention to the springs and waterways. Water not only defines the cultural identity of the state, it also underpins its economic health. Without water, Florida would be a desert. As humans, we have constructed great civilizations and championed powerful inventions. Yet those accomplishments have taken us away from fully experiencing and appreciating our natural world. We have lost touch with the reality that Earth is what sustains us. We cannot thrive and be healthy as humans unless nature and all her life forms are also healthy and thriving. Now we are called to summon our moral and legal resources to keep the beauty, the function, and the spirit of our natural world alive.